Matt and I set out to design and make an electric guitar over two years ago, our main objective was to take all of the information that I had gained from building acoustic guitars for over 15 years and then apply those principles to the electric guitar. And that's the reason why we ended up landing on what is basically a Telecaster style guitar. Um, that instrument is iconic, in my opinion, for a reason. A, it was pretty much the first solid body electric guitar to ever hit the market, but second of all, it's a very simple guitar that does its job really, really well, and there's not a lot of moving parts. And that would allow Matt and I to kind of refine it a lot easier, and it was just a really good starting point for us. Electric guitars work a little bit differently than acoustic guitars, in that when the strings vibrate, we want that energy to travel through the neck and into the body of the guitar, so that the whole thing vibrates as one unit, and then we create a feedback loop with the amplifier. The first thing that Matt and I decided to tackle in improving this guitar was going to be the neck joint. And the reason that we did that is because, as you guys are probably aware, uh, Fender Telecasters and pretty much every copy of that guitar comes with a standard what we call a bolt-on neck. But in my opinion, I feel like that's kind of even not that accurate in that most of them are held on with just wood screws. And on top of that, the neck is just a pure pocket joint, meaning that the bottom of the neck just fits inside of the pocket on the body. Uh, and that leaves a lot of wiggle room as well as a really much smaller patch of area where wood is contacting another to increase that coupling that we just talked about. So with a little bit of thought, we kind of dug into it, did some research, saw what other builders are doing, and we came up with what we, uh, I'd say quite unimaginatively, call the dog bone. Uh, as you can see, that's what it looks like. It looks like a little dog bone. Um, but it's not just for its shape. We did this because what it allows us to do is to add a second cup inside of that joint where we can essentially add more surface area and this is going to help with a couple of things first taking those vibrations that are in the neck and helping to transfer them into the body of the guitar but in addition to that it does a thing that we call indexing it actually properly aligns the neck to the guitar body anybody who's ever tried to switch out the neck of an electric guitar that has a bolt-on neck knows that if you don't do it just absolutely perfectly you can have a lot of misalignment issues and by having the dog bone on our guitar it allows us to be able to take any neck and then stick it on another body and it's going to lock into place absolutely perfectly and the way that we go about tying all of this together is by instead of using wood screws we actually put stainless steel threaded inserts in the neck and those are all epoxied in and then we're going to use machine screws and then grommets on the body and all of this comes together in this really beautifully kind of uh, machined unit just snaps together and you can tell immediately when you hold a title caster in your hands how much more kind of just connected the whole thing is and in our opinion what i think that we've gotten here is a guitar that kind of has the uh, resonant benefits that a lot of times you'll only see on glue on or through neck guitars but with the convenience of it being bolt on Another place where we saw some room for improvement in the electric guitar was in the design of the neck itself. Uh, if you think about it, a string is just a manifestation of energy, right? And uh, conserving that energy within the guitar as much as possible will give us the things that uh, a really good electric guitar will have. And, and I hear players talking a lot about sustain and sometimes a guitar just feels alive like it's almost playing itself. And what that says to me with my limited engineering background is that whenever you pluck a note, that note needs to stay within the guitar and not get lost somewhere between the bridge and the nut. To that end, what we decided that we really, really wanted to seek out most in our title caster was neck rigidity. One of the ways that we thought about accomplishing that was to actually remove the truss rod and put in a carbon fiber D2. In the first 20 odd guitars that we've sent out into the world, we've been really happy with the sustain and all the things that we were looking for in the conservation of energy within the guitar system. However, there were uh, some shortcomings with that design that we'll get into more later. Another thing that was going to be super important to us as we started to reshape and rethink this guitar was going to be ergonomics. One thing that always has bothered me about some, especially the early Telecasters, is they're just very squared off and they can feel very like a chunk of wood in your lap. So Matt and I took a little bit of time and specifically I wanted to reshape the guitar 
in a way that it would still look very much like a Telecaster, but would have my own little twist on it. I wanted to have a guitar that was a little bit more uh, in the shape of the female figure uh, instead of it being kind of squared off. Uh, and on top of that, this is a love it or hate it kind of a thing, but I just absolutely love a guitar that has uh, a belly bevel on the back. So that was something that we added to the guitar. Um, that is a little bit difficult for us because something that is not evident right out of the gate is that every title caster that we make actually is fully chambered. So when we went to go put the bevel on the back of the guitar, it was really important that we got that at the right depth so that we don't interfere with the chambering. But it was important that we were able to pull it off. Uh, the chambering that we do on the guitar is purely as far as we're concerned for weight reduction because we don't have any sort of F hole in the guitar. Uh, or it's, and it's not completely, completely hollow. We're not really doing that for any sort of acoustic purpose, but uh, I would estimate that it probably takes off anywhere between 25 and 30% of the weight of the guitar. Uh, and once again, that just makes for the whole experience of playing the guitar that much more enjoyable because it doesn't weigh very much. Another ergonomic improvement that we wanted to do was to address the area of where the neck meets the body. Uh, on a standard Telecaster, it's just this giant squared off piece of wood and it can be very cumbersome when you go to get for those higher frets. So what we did is we rounded all of that off and we brought the heel of the neck even closer to the body and it allows you to be able to get right up all the way up to that 22nd fret with no problems whatsoever. And the very last little thing that we did when it comes to ergonomics was the three-way selector switch. Uh, a mod that a lot of people will do is to angle the switch ever so slightly so that it's just easier to hit. And on our guitars, because we moved the switch plate to the back of the guitar, we went ahead and made it look that way on the front side permanently so that you, for that three-way switch, is just so much easier to get to this way. As Matt mentioned earlier, up until this point on our title casters, we have been using what is called a carbon D tube in the neck, which is slightly different than what you may have heard of before, which a lot of the times is just a carbon rod in the neck in addition to a truss rod. The method we've used up until this point actually replaces a truss rod altogether, and probably about half of the neck's core is replaced by a giant section of carbon fiber. And this is really great. The reason that we started to do this was so that we could reduce the weight of the neck first of all, but also add simplicity to the guitar by removing the truss rod and allowing the strings to do all of the work of adding the relief to the neck. Well, inevitably, as we've sent more and more of these guitars out all over the United States and some even around the world, um, the guitar is no longer in our care and we have to then deal with the environments that every single guitar is living in. And in the end, it does look like we need to add back a level of adjustability to the neck. So what we're going to be doing moving forward is actually adding back a truss rod to the guitar, but we didn't want to get rid of the concept of adding stiffness and resonance to the neck. So what we're going to be doing is actually doing a double titanium reinforced neck in addition to the truss rod. And uh, I think that what this is going to do is hopefully find that sweet spot for us to allow uh, a superior performance of the instrument, but also having the serviceability that anybody's going to need in their day-to-day -day use of the guitar. Chris and I love these D-tube necks. On the off chance you feel uncomfortable buying a truss rodless guitar, or maybe you've bought one and then the first time you take it to your guitar tech, he doesn't know what to do with it because it doesn't have a truss rod in it. Don't worry, Chris and I have your back. The nice thing about our dogbone design and the indexing that it provides is that it makes it super easy to swap out one of our carbon fiber D-tube necks for one of our newer titanium reinforced necks. And Chris and I are more than happy to do that free of charge. You know, it's kind of crazy after spending the last two years doing all the research and development on this guitar and then going through the process of making a prototype and then mass producing them and finally having them out in the world. I stand back and look at it with a lot of pride because a i never really thought that i would build electric guitars uh and here we are i'm building more electric guitars than i'm building acoustic and i'm very proud of them they represent everything that we do here at driftwood just as equally as the most custom of custom acoustic guitars um the other thing that i think is really really cool about these electric guitars is that for us this is a journey about discovery we're trying to learn as much as we can as we build. So the way that you see a title caster today might be different a year from now. And every time we figure out a better way to do something, we implement that right now. We're not gonna sit around and wait till we come up with a better guitar altogether. 
we want to take all of those incremental changes and and make those changes as we make the guitar so that you guys at home if you believe in what we're doing here if you support what we do and you're looking for people who will try new things in this world um, that you can feel like you're a part of it too every time you guys watch one of our videos or you buy a guitar and you take it home and you play it you're doing us a favor by helping us make a better guitar and by helping to keep the lights on here at home and really what you're doing is you're making matt and i's dreams come true if i want to be super sappy about it but the reality of it is uh the idea that we get to make our living building guitars is just mind-blowing to me and we're able to do it because folks like you guys watching this video help us out and you support what we do and that's super super cool and I guess what I want to say is that these aren't our guitars, they're our guitars. Even if you don't buy one, let us know what you'd like to see in future iterations of the guitar. And we'll see if we can implement some of those changes if enough people think that they are worthy of doing. And we thank you guys so much for uh, just coming along with us.